The global art market totals nearly $70 billion, with returns in recent decades that outpace bonds by some estimates. That growth has spawned new investors looking to make some money in what's now a booming sector. Economics correspondent Paul Salman takes a look at the prudence of investing in art for our arts and culture series, Canvas. The grand opening of Artex, a European art stock market, which plans to start trading soon, selling shares in art like this Francis Bacon, one work at a time. We are the equivalent of NASDAQ, or the New York Stock Exchange, or the London Stock Exchange. Co-founder and CEO Yasir Benjaloun Touimi. Instead of buying a corporate share in a company, you buy a share into a masterpiece. One of 550,000 shares in a triptych by the late English painter Francis Bacon of his lover George Dyer. An IPO, a public offering, with shares priced at $100 each. And what do I get for that? You get the appreciation in exact way you get the appreciation is if you're buying an ounce of gold. What if Francis Bacon paintings are no longer popular? When you buy share in Apple at any time, are you sure not they, they're not going to lose value? Now, Artex is the latest firm to sell shares in individual works of art, but not the first. In the past, collectors and dealers have often bought things in small consortiums. Wall Street Journal art market correspondent Kelly Crow. The British Railway Pension did sort of pioneer um, this idea that you could pool your money um, and buy better things and hold it for a time and resell it. So somebody can buy a share of, this is a Warhol or a reproduction of a yep. Warhol that you own, right? Yep. But nowadays, New York's Masterworks already sells art shares to the public as you would stocks. Chief Investment Officer Alan Sokolitsky. Masterworks is a firm that makes art an investable asset class. Uh, the first firm that's ever done it, we started in 2017. So we've been doing it now for several years. During which the firm's value has climbed to more than a billion dollars, it says. Employees beating the bushes for marketable, high-value artwork and customers to whom to hawk shares in a masterwork like an Andy Warhol or a Yayoi Kusama. She's actually about 100 years old, which is always interesting. It tells you that artists have definitely cracked the code on uh, living forever, apparently. The usual minimum investment, $15,000 for shares of an artwork whose price is derived from an auction database tracking 7,000 artists post-World War II. Masterworks says it only buys blue chips, artists like Warhol and Kusama, whose values have outperformed the stock and bond markets for the past 20 years, and Ruche, Cause, supposedly Masterwork-backed securities. So does this pose a threat to traditional sellers like auction house Christie's, whose Giacometti transmogrifying into a Dega had me flummoxed, till learning they were holograms to be digitally shipped to potential buyers. We really see it as an expansion of the market, and it's an, it's an innovative way to, to broaden our market. President for American Art Bonnie Brennan. If this is a way to meet new clients, all the better for us. But better for everyone? Well, as always, warns reporter Kelly Crow, investor beware. The art market is just super unregulated. It's kind of like a wild west. If you want to buy a $100 share just for kicks in the same way that you would go to a baseball game just to have fun and see how something does, roll the dice, have some fun. I, I just, um, I would be a little nervous, you know, taking out a second mortgage. Even for a painting as highly valued in the current market as the Francis Bacon triptych? These George Dyer triptychs that sold in 2017 for mid-50 million are important because that lover eventually committed suicide on the eve of a major show of break-ins. We really love the soap opera of an artist's life and how that feeds into the work. It's a work called Hot Pie, which simulates, you know, Hot Pie sitting on, on the kitchen window, cooling. Yeah, I see. That's, yeah. The, that's, the, that's the steam from the hot pie. Contemporary art consultant Alex Glauber, who helped his client buy this work by Alex Decourt. Glauber has sold to Masterworks. So an art stock market's a good thing? It certainly brings more money and attention to the art market, but I don't know if it's necessarily healthy for art and the appreciation of art long term. Why not? Why? Because if the conversation is more about the money than the art, uh, that really both devalues and undermines the very purpose of art. But the argument is, 
Mm, I'll start out with it as an investment, then I'll get interested in it, I'll learn more about it, I'll become an art appreciator. But if what you're trying to learn about is why this is a, a, a savvy investment, why this artist is poised uh, for an uptick in their value, that's very much at odds with what perhaps put that artist in that position in the first place. In other words, we're talking speculation. As in some 1,000 Picassos and innumerable other brand name works stored in warehouses around the world. Or more recently, speculation in digital NFTs, non-fungible tokens that boomed and then swooned since I interviewed investor Lynn Dye barely a year ago. Okay, so what's happened to the NFT market since last we talked? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of have changed. We saw the speculative bubble pop. Which had seen Lynn Dye's bored ape NFT double in value to $400,000 before falling back down to around $100,000 today by his estimate. Do you have second thoughts, misgivings about having bought your bored ape? No, absolutely not. I think certainly the bored ape probably will hold its value over time. Unlike, say, Joseph Israel's Pancake Day, which fetched more than a million pounds in 1895, a billion or more dollars today, depending on how you convert prices. Israel's largest painting at auction in recent years brought $35,000. Just one of countless examples that illustrate what philosopher Barbara Hernstein Smith calls the contingencies of value. Value is not fixed, inherent, objective, and part of objects, but the product of numerous interactions between people and things in their universe. It's contingent in the sense that what affects those interactions uh, changes. The question is always going to be, will it continue to be valued over time? Not will it continue to have value over time? And thus, for the investment value of art we've learned to prize, from Leonardo and Rembrandt to Israel's Van Gogh and Picasso, Bacon, Warhol, Kusama, a bored ape, time will tell. If we fickle mortals, we'll continue valuing them as we do today. For the PBS NewsHour, Paul Salman, mostly in New York.